Hey guys, this is Max Headspace 9mm, and I'm going to tell you my Sega Saga. This is a Sega rifle in 7.62 by 39, and I've been working on it over the years. And if you've ever thought about doing a Sega conversion, it is a lot of fun. They're really good base rifles. They're definitely worth putting some work into, and you can get them for really good deals. So, um, this one started out life as a hunting configuration. And I moved the grip forward and put on the Hogue grip. I put in a Tapco trigger, put on the billet trigger guard, and a Galil foregrip. And uh, I put in a, a bullet guide so that it can use regular double stack magazines that are commonly available for AKs. The Segas use a plastic special magazine that uh, isn't interchangeable with any other so because it has a, a bullet ramp built into the magazine but I wanted to use regular AK mags so I put in a bullet guide myself and uh, I moved the trigger group forward so I could use a pistol grip in its normal location and let's see what else did I do at the time I did not want to cut off the tang so I got this receiver block here. And what this does, if you do not want to move your trigger group forward and work with the, the pistol grip mounted in a location where the trigger is on a stock rifle, then you can get this block here. It has a threaded hole in the bottom and you could screw a pistol grip right into that and use it without moving the trigger group forward. But that's a really easy thing to do, and I did that. The problem is I wanted to mount this beautiful, really, really cool and well-made Raptor stock on the gun, and I didn't really feel comfortable cutting the tang off. So what this block does is it allows me to leave the tang on, spaces it out so that you can put this Raptor stock on, and I've just decided its uh, length of pull is a little too long. It looks kind of ugly. And uh, I've decided I am ready to cut the tang. And what will allow me to do that is this little part right here. This is also from Carolina Shooter Supply. This goes right inside the back of the receiver, right here. And it'll allow me to get rid of this block and bolt the stock directly to the back of the gun. And uh, these are not rivets, they're little plastic caps that fill the holes. And uh, I'll be getting rid of those and putting little uh, Allen bolts in there. So uh, I'm going to do that operation today and I'm just going to get this rifle built up a little bit better because actually I've learned a few things since I got it and as I learn I'm making it better and better. I love this gun so much that I'm going to make it as good as I possibly can. One other thing I'm going to do is put in the ALG trigger. Now this trigger is the nicest trigger for an AK that I've ever come across. It costs about twice as much as the Tapco but it's about twice as good as the Tapco. Tapcos are great but the ALG is better. So I'm gonna upgrade the gun today and you can kind of follow along and see how I do it. And I promise you, if I can do it, so can you. So here we go. All right, the first thing I gotta do is get these Allen screws out of here, which will help me remove the stock. There's two of them and we take them out just like this. Now, if I didn't have a T-handle like this, this would take a lot longer. So, if you have a T-handle, use it, because regular angled Allen is very slow. And next, I'm going to use the appropriate sized wrench if I've got it. I'm sure I do. To remove the bolt out of the tang. And 
there's another bolt right here in the top that needs to come out because this slides inside of the receiver. So since I need two hands to do that, I'm just going to tell you about it and then I'll do it. All right, the bolt is out and now this comes out. These two little hex uh, nuts right here slide into this channel and they allow this thing to bolt up through these two holes in the tang. I'm going to tell you, getting those rivets out was one of the toughest things I've done in a while. That plastic just kind of formed to that hole and did not want to come out. I used a knife, I pushed from the inside, and I used pliers, and ultimately I got them out, but they are mangled and they're certainly not going to be useful for anything else. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. All right. Do you ever do something over and over again thinking there's got to be an easier way and then by the last one you figure it out? Well, there is a real simple way to get these things out and it's the exact opposite of what I did for three out of four of them. I just pushed it in. I used a punch and I just pushed it right through the hole to the inside. That's much easier. So if you've got to do this job, do that. It'll save you a lot of hassle. I even cut my finger, my thumb using a knife trying to cut them off. Anyway, there they are. They're out. All right, now here's the part. It slides right in there. And if this tang weren't here, it'd go all the way in flush with the back of the receiver. And of course, when it's in, the holes, the threaded holes in this piece of billet aluminum will line up with the holes in the receiver and the screws will hold it in place. All right, guys, here we are at the moment of truth. I am ready to cut the tang. So this is the tang. I've got this in a lightly padded vise, very lightly held in here. I'm not gonna squeeze it too much at all, just to hold it for me. And I wanna just cut it off flush with the receiver, right here. All right, there it is with the tang removed. It's a nice, neat cut. I just used an angle grinder with a cutting wheel. But you can use a Dremel, it'd take a little longer, but it would work. You can use a hacksaw if you're careful. And I'm going to just neaten this up a little bit with a, uh, a little die grinder with a sanding disc in it. Get it nice and flush, take all the burrs off, and then we'll paint it. I just couldn't wait to check this thing out. It looks so nice and neat now. I'll cut off flesh with this billet aluminum receiver in here. Much neater arrangement than the last. I think I'm going to be real happy losing that one inch of length of pull. Okay, here we are. The tang is cut. I did a little touch-up painting on here. Now if you're going to do some spray painting on your Sega, you don't want a dead flat paint and you don't want a gloss either, you want a satin. The paint that's on the Segas that it comes with is a very tough satin paint. It's very utilitarian, easy to touch up if you need to. So it's actually a pretty good finish. So here is the block. It goes right in here real nice. Now look at this. If you look through those holes, they line up with the threaded holes in the block. So, I'm going to put these screws in here. Now, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take these out and I'm going to put Loctite on. I'm not sure you have to do that, but I think it's a good idea. So the Loctite that I like to use is a kind of like a chapstick and it has a cap and keeps it from getting dried out. I really like that. Just a little bit on there is all you need, not much at all.
Now I'm not going to snug these all down until I get them all in. It's really not easy doing this with one hand. So if I can do it with one hand, I guarantee you can do it with two. All right, here are those Allen screws with Loctite tightened down, all four of them on both sides. Now this is aluminum, this block inside of here, so don't over tighten. You can strip it. I didn't do that. I just got it nice and snug and I stopped. The Loctite will do the rest. All right, here it is. The block is out and the tang is cut and the Carolina Raptor stock is bolted right into the back of the receiver via the billet flush receiver mount and honestly I'll tell you the hardest thing about this whole procedure was getting these little plastic hole covers out the rest was a piece of cake uh, this here is an inch and a half. It protrudes out of the receiver an inch and a half. And this is maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe a little less. So I've cut an inch and a quarter off of the length of pull of this rifle. And I think it looks a lot better, to be honest with you. That was a very easy thing. It probably took me about 15 minutes start to finish to do all of that. Now the next thing I want to do is work on the trigger. Now what we got is a TAPCO. It's always a great trigger. I love it. But what I got is even better. This is the ALG. Now if you look at these really closely, they're finished really nicely. They're not hand polished, but there's something about the surfaces on these where they rub together that's already extremely smooth. There's very little difference otherwise to the trigger. The, um, the bow is different shape than the trigger on the um, Tapco, the part where you put your finger. And it works a little bit differently. So they give you plenty of instructions. It's supposedly a very simple procedure. I've never put in an ALG trigger before, but uh, based on these instructions, I doubt if it's really any more difficult than the TAPCO. All right, so I'm gonna try to uh, show you what uh, the difference is in the length of pull of this trigger. So you've got, I've already cocked this. Actually, I gotta take the safety off. Here I am doing this all one-handed. All right, now watch this very closely. There is no slop in that. It's just that much. Here's the reset. So that's a pretty short pull. We're going to compare that to the ALG when it's in, and we'll see what we think that's different about it. Okay, this is the ALG trigger group right here. All installed. It took me about 10 minutes to get in. Very, very easy installation. On Sega's, it is probably easier than most. So uh, everything fits really, really good. Um, there was no grinding or fitting at all. It just dropped right in. And it's, it's a really beautiful uh, working trigger. I'm gonna show you how the length of pull and the reset and all of that is, just a second. Okay, this is the famous ALG trigger bow. And it's a little different shape than the Tapco. This is what I took out. Which do I like better? Well. 
I actually think the ALG trigger feels a little better on your finger. It's a little more positive, but it's probably mostly psychological. One thing is sure, you can definitely tell it when you look at the gun from a distance. It's a totally different shape. So we're going to do a, uh, that's all the play that you have right there, that amount. So let me rack it. All right, now here we go. We're going to pull the trigger. Here's no take up at all. That's it. And here's the reset. And then again. Now you may not feel that this is much different than the uh, Tapco, but it really does feel different. It's a much lighter pull, I will say, and there's a little better feel of what's happening. It doesn't really um, seem to stack up on you. It just sort of feels real positive. Guys, one other thing that I want to mention. You may have noticed that the little um, hold open button is gone. When I first got this rifle, I thought that was a really cool feature. Um, I just thought that I really wanted it. It's definitely a landmark Sega rifle item. But after thousands of rounds in this rifle, I've never really found a reason to use that feature. The safety has a notch in it, so it works much better. I actually like this a lot better as a bolt hold open. The part looks like this, and it's easy to remove, and it really isn't any loss when you take it out. It's actually a very easy thing to just not put it back in, and everything goes together really nice. So uh, I'm really happy to simplify the gun and not have that in there. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna miss it. It never really got in the way, but it just really didn't seem to be needed. This video is sponsored by Tang.